Hey guys, this webio is an extension on my last webio. Now extension you may ask, well if you want to learn the full gist of what I'm doing, please watch the first part of this mega webio which was a high speed rail link connecting the cities of Quebec and Montreal. This webio as you may probably see is an extension on that same high speed rail route from Montreal to Toronto with a stop at Ottawa. Now I think this line is vital not just to increase the economies of Toronto and Montreal and not to mention Ottawa which is a capital city of Canada but also to make Canada more globally competitive. Canada is the only G7 nation without any high speed rail whatsoever and I think connecting the cities along the St. Lawrence and Great Lakes corridor of Canada which houses more than half its population is vital for such a competitive nation to remain competitive. So let's get into a little summary of this line itself. One can travel from Montreal to Ottawa in 30 minutes. Ottawa to Toronto will take 1 hour and 25 minutes. The entire journey from Montreal to Toronto will take 1 hour and 55 minutes. If you continue all the way up to Quebec, it'll still be around 2 hours and 40 to 45 minutes. That is very, very fast. In fact, if you thought 350 kilometers per hour in my last webby was fast, get ready for this. 400 kilometer per hour speeds in parts of the line. Not all of it, but parts of it. Not to mention, there are quite a bit scenic parts of this line as well. So we enjoy scenery of the Canadian highlands this route will take you there as well. So this line goes through Montreal, goes through Ottawa. Now I chose Ottawa as a portion where this line goes because it is a capital of Canada and I believe it's the seventh or eighth largest city. It's not that much smaller than Quebec and to omit it from this line would be a great not use of res not fulling use of resources if you know what I mean because Ottawa would anyways be only like 30 miles off course or 50 kilometers off course why not just make the line go up there it wouldn't add that much time to the overall travel time especially given the speed of this line that already is there as in would be there anyways so with before we get to the actual webio, I'm going to go through the colors again because I just introduced these new colors in the last webio. So blue is existing track segments. They may be unelectrified, but all that needs to be done is to electrify them. Green is new track segments. So these are they could be curve straightening. They're really all just curve straightening in a way. I don't have some big 20 to 30 kilometer long new alignment, especially in this webio but these are just new alignments that will allow the high speed to continue through all sections of the line. Yellow is existing alignment, but it has to be widened from one track to two tracks. So this would allow more capacity on the line. So without out of the way, let's begin. So, yes, this looks interesting, right? Kind of like the Greek letter Lambda. So Lambda, looks like this kind of I'm going to rotate it like that it's probably my one of my first times I've rotated the screen in a webio but what this means is that the station not station the st trains coming from Quebec into Montreal will actually exit even Toronto bound will all exit going towards the southeast now you may be wondering why do this why not just connect it from the west well the problem is is that if you go to the west the lines are either much less straight and or they do directly connect to the route I wanted to so vast new alignments would have to be built in comparison to what I'm doing here so instead the trains will just exit southeast along the existing track but they won't go across the St. Lawrence River they'll continue down like this at a speed of around 100 kilometers per hour it will go above this canal and once it passes St. Henry, that's when the speed will increase to 300 kilometers per hour already, yeah. This is a four track segment here, so I could keep two tracks for good strains and the other two tracks will be for high speed rail. It'll parallel Auto Route 20 for a little bit before it turns a little bit towards the west. 
and it'll continue at its full speed. Now eventually the Monreal AMT or IMT train will join it but what's interesting is that there are four tracks for the IMT and goods trains and two tracks remain for the high-speed train. So all that needs to be done is to electrify these tracks for high-speed trains. So after a while you get to Aeroport de Montréal. Now Montréal Airport is the third largest airport of Canada. You may be thinking third largest? Why not second? Actually Vancouver is second largest but that's beyond the point of this video. Anyways this is still a major airport and this has multiple functions. One, it allows easy access from Montreal to the airport so business travelers flying in can easily take a high-speed rail link to go to Montreal within seven or eight minutes. Beyond that though, this line also serves the western and southwestern suburbs of Montreal. So in other words, they won't have to drive all the way to Gare Centrale to take a train to, for example, Quebec. On the other hand, they won't have to go all the way here to go to Toronto, for example. They could just make a more local start right there. Now, this will be a regional high-speed stop, so only certain trains will stop here, not all. But I do think such a station is vital, both for the economy of Montreal and economy of Canada as a whole, not to mention the economic success of such a line. So after Aeroport de Montreal, it continues along the existing southern two tracks while the northern three to four tracks were for the existing IMT and goods trains. It continues to parallel Autoroute 20. In fact, the entire route since Quebec has pretty much paralleled Autoroute 20. That will change later on, I promise. So here's some curve straightening that needs to be done. The speed may need to decrease to 250 kilometers per hour, but I think with tilting trains and extensive curve straightening efficiency, this can be 300 kilometers per hour. I don't want a tunnel to go under this area here. So just across the bridge is the next station, Il Pero. Now Il Pero is on the extreme southwestern end. So this serves more of like the extreme western communities of the Montreal metropolitan area and similar purpose to the Aeroport de Montreal station in that these people won't have to drive to another station to get on the train. So more people will be using the train and it will be more locally serving. Also, as I said, this will be a regional high-speed stop and not an ultra high-speed stop. So the ultra high-speed trains which only stop at Montreal, Gare Centrale, Ottawa and Toronto Union Station will not stop here, as I just said with my last phrase. So after Il Pero, it will continue at 300 km per hour. Some slight curve straightening as the IMT system ends. And right after that, this is where 400 km per hour speeds start. Now, if trains cannot run at that speed by then, based on the technology of trains themselves, 350 is very doable, but I want this to be 400 because it is a, this is all existing dual track, but more importantly, it is a straight shot for around 40 to 50 miles. You enter Ontario using this exact segment right here. So we're just in Ontario. I can stop using my French accent as I try to. Montreal becomes Montreal. So I'll probably still try using Montreal once in a while just for fun. But anyways, this is all existing. No curve straightening needs to be done at all. However, just west of Apple Hill, this is where it gets interesting. The line exists and connects to a later part of the line. So in theory, I could make a continuous 400 km per hour section. However, in the scope of this web view, I wanted to serve all the communities in Ottawa is not too far away. So I thought it was worth it to route the line north and then south along the existing tracks over there. Now in the future, I may propose a high-speed link that bypasses Ottawa altogether but Ottawa will be both a regional and ultra high-speed stop so I, th I don't think there'll be much point in trying to bypass it at this point if it's seen that there's excessive demand for bypassing Ottawa I may consider a line going like this but as of now no so this will be new alignment for around five kilometers and will join the other line up here now this line has been parallel to the existing line that have been 
going over with the blue line so it all just needs to be electrification however this new line here only has one track so I'll have to increase it by one track so it's two tracks and also add electrification so just east of Moose Creek is where this segment begins it stays relatively fine until this area right here now this magenta I don't know if I said it but magenta is a bridge and if you see white there is white later on that's going to be a tunnel these are all different types of new alignments green is just standard ground alignments so here this is still at 400 kilometers per hour this may look like a relatively steep radius but I think it will work for at least 350 kilometers per hour if not 400 kilometers per hour if tilting trains are used so after this new curve straightening the line will continue straight along the existing one track alignment so this all has to be widened at a full speed of 400 kilometers per hour but holy slow your brakes <laughs> you're already at Ottawa I told you 400 kilometers per hour is very very fast in fact the line was so straight I didn't have much to say within like the last 70 to 80 miles of track so the line will have to slow down to 80 to 100 kilometers per hour along these bends here I don't think curve straightening was necessary because it would require quite a bit of new alignment where my mouse is going because otherwise it would destroy a lot of homes also we are relatively close to a station the line may increase to 150 kilometers per hour here but all trains stop at Ottawa Junction now you may be wondering why Junction if you remember my Florida high speed rail video the point of that was to get from center city to center city to center city well the problem here is that center city Ottawa is still quite a bit of a way away and there's no direct line that goes there and out without having to do what kind of like what the lambda situation in Montreal is to the extreme so it's around five kilometers to the north but I decided it's just worth it to build a station out here most of Ottawa is concentrated on the Ontario side of the region rather than the Quebec side of the region so placing a station at least on the Ontario side of the region would make much more sense it's also closer to much of the suburbs in fact more than half of the entire region will find an easier travel to go towards Ottawa Junction rather than Ottawa Central if you live near Ottawa Central you could just take the regional train towards Ottawa Junction and get on the train to go from there all trains stop here both regional and ultra so the line will continue it will be a little slow here and this is all dual track I forgot to mention it this is dual track however when it exits this kind of basket weave junction just east of Nipan it will go on a single track alignment so this has to be widened as well and this will go back to the full speed of 400 kilometers per hour yes full speed from now on full speed is 400 kilometers per hour it used to be 300 to 350 but I think this line can handle 400 next station is Barhaven now Barhaven is like a southern kind of satellite city of Ottawa it's a good 15 kilometers away from the city center so I was thinking building a station here would be vital with similar reasons as I said in like airport to Montreal and the other suburban station near Montreal so after bar even the line will continue 400 kilometers per hour until just north of Smith's Falls this is where it reaches that line that cuts south of Ottawa and it would eventually rejoin the old segment that I went over so this will have to be a two kilometer stretch of brand new track but the speed will stay at 400 kilometers per hour however after Perth just north of Perth actually there's some curve straightening here as well to cut through some of these corners the line will have to decrease to 250 kilometers per hour and this is where we get into the hills the scenic hills we were talking about so just west of Elliot the line will decrease speed yet again to 225 miles per not miles kilometers per hour 225 miles per hour is faster than probably anything on this line I think 400 kilometers per hour is I think 240 miles per hour but anyways 225 kilometers per hour because as you can see there's a quite a bit 
of terrain we have to get through. Now it's only around 50 kilometers, so I don't think this speed would cause that much of a drastic slowdown on times considering we were just at 400 kilometers per hour. That shows how much developing trains for 400 kilometers per hour is because if they're only capable of 300 kilometers per hour, the effects of this segment will start piling up and eventually won't make this line as attractive as it could possibly be. So I'm still keeping the speed at 225 kilometers per hour. Some curves trading like here, just west of this lake, I have to build a tunnel. And by the way, if you have not noticed, it's kind of funny. Look at the imagery date, 2006. Yeah, that's almost 10 years ago, but I know this line still is there, so... Yeah, this is a relatively rural area, so not much will change within 10 years. It will continue at 225 kilometers per hour. Now here there's another tunnel and then some ground segment to cut through these mountains here. And here's something interesting before we get any farther. Look at that. Doesn't that look a lot like the letter A? When I was doing it, I realized it. I'm going to call that the A Lake. And the A Lake is ironically around three kilometers away from the halfway point. The halfway point somewhere here of this entire line. The letter A is not too far from that. So A for effort or A for, I don't know what to think of. If you want to think of what the A stands for, please leave that in the comments. But I think that's really cool. One of those things that you always see those videos on cool things on Google Earth. Guess what? I just found one right here. Anyways, after the A Lake, it'll reach back on the existing alignment. Some minor curve straightening. It'll stay at its slower speed of 225 kilometers per hour. There'll be some curve straightening just northwest of Beaver Lake and just west of Victoria Lake. Now here, there are not that many mountains, so a tunnel is not necessary. It'll continue through past Stitchbourne and past Parham. Now after Parham, this is where some more curve straightening has to go and possibly some viaducts over these roads as well. If I didn't already mention it, no grade crossings will be present in the full high speed line. So after Parham, the line will continue. Now after this, the line will continue and increase its speed back up to 250 km per hour as the turns are not as harsh anymore. So just east of Wilkinson, there's another curve straightening section, but again, this is for 250 km per hour capabilities of this line. Some more curve straightening, and it'll pass through the communities of Lenz and Croydon. Now Croydon is where the line will come back to a full speed of 300 km per hour. And as you can see, we have fully exited this not mountain range, but hill range, and we're closer to Toronto than you might think. I'm trying to make this web go quickly. It will definitely be faster than the travel time between the two cities, no doubt about that. But I want to show that this is a really fast line. It goes through a lot of stuff, but before you know it, you'll be at your destination. So as I said, Croydon is where 300 km per hour section starts. Again, surf some curve straightening in the green segments. This is all still only one track, so this will have to be upgraded to two tracks. Finally, this line will reach the shoreline. And the shoreline also continues along the St. Lawrence River from Montreal. But it is much more curvy and obviously it would not go to Ottawa. I would skip Ottawa completely. So I decided the more northerly alignment. But some curve straightened sections here while keeping the train's maximum speed of 300 kilometers per hour will allow it to go towards the shoreline and guess what on the shoreline we are back towards dual track rail in fact even three tracks west of Belleville now three tracks is vital because the goods trains can still have space to move not to mention the via trains so Belleville is a station here now this is a little different. This is the first station that's not really a suburb of any particular city. I guess it could be a very far reach from Toronto, especially when this line's complete. But this is to serve like the central southern, like the northeastern coast of Lake Ontario, like this area right here. Even Kingston, Ontario is not too far away. So I think thought that building a station here is vital to serve the local community and again increase the overall ridership of this line. 
the line will continue at a full speed of 300 km per hour. It may have to slow down to 250 km per hour on the Kurs nail just north of Astra, but besides that, it's full speed. Now, just west of Astra, the line will increase back to, you guessed it, 400 km per hour. Now, here it's a little different. There are two tracks, like two sets of dual tracks. One of them is used for currently for goods trains and the VIA trains. However, that ironically is a one I propose a high speed line on. So what I'm going to do is a VIA train will be moved to the other pair of tracks because that has more curves, the VIA and good trains. But for them, they don't go at that high of a speed. So it wouldn't matter. All that really needs to be done is relocation of stations. But I do think the existing VIA train tracks should be given towards the high speed train tracks. There's another pair of tracks just to the south of this alignment. So if you get alarmed in that you realize this is a VR pair rather than the unused pair, don't get worried really. I know this will have to be done to make it work. So at a full speed of 400 km per hour, it just passed south of Brighton. Now this is parallel to Canada 401. Now this is said to be the biggest, no, busiest highway in Eastern North America. I believe the busiest highway in all of North America is Interstate 405, also known as a 405 freeway, just west of Los Angeles. But this went will eventually, especially west of Toronto, we're not getting there in this webio, unfortunately, but west of Toronto, this becomes like an 18 lane freeway. So the line will continue 400 kilometers per hour, like right on the shake, not right on the shores, not shakes, shores of Lake Ontario. So you could get some scenic views along the way, unlike the highway where it's still like a good two to three kilometers away. Now just east of Kuburg, this is where speeds will decrease, but speeds will decrease quite a bit. Speeds will have to decrease to 250 kilometers per hour because what happens is that there are a lot more turns here and rather than trying to intense curve straightening I thought 250 kilometers per hour is fine in this section right here. It won't drastically reduce the speed or increase the time required but the amount of cost required to build the project will dramatically go down. I tried to quote my exact statement as I said from my New York to Boston high speed train video very similar concept. I tried to even here like these this place here I could have very well built a really long tunnel it would not save that much time in the general gist of things and Canada's transportation system would anyways render this much faster than any type of bus or even plane in most cases. In my original webio between Springfield and Worcester very similar case here I decided why not just go at around 200 to 225 kilometers per hour through the hills. Intense curve straightening but not that much, not that many tunnels especially. Use existing tracks as much as possible. You'll save yourself a lot of time and also the line will open much faster. So with that out of the way, Coburg, another town on the northern banks of Lake Ontario. Now this will be another regional high speed stop. Nothing much to explain here, just again serving the local communities. Some curve straightening just towards the west and we'll continue through Port Hope. Now this is all at 250 kilometers per hour on the existing double track segment. The other tracks will probably be where the VIA trains will have to go and the goods trains because this honestly is more desirable for high speed trains and the VIA trains are not really meant for speed all that much more for convenience to local communities. And with that, while I'm saying that, I don't want the VIA trains to go away. The VIA trains do serve a lot of smaller communities. It's kind of like a hub and spoke system in a way. Even the regional high speed trains won't stop at every small town. Otherwise, they won't be high speed. So I'm still thinking that the VIA train should remain. Probably go on this upper segment here, but even stop at like Bowmansville, for example. I don't know if they already do. I don't think so, actually. And let the high speed rail do its, its job of moving people quickly. You have to find the right compromise between where you stop how many places you stop and what the maximum speed is. Now one place that I think we should stop at is Oshawa. Population around 220,000 people. It is a main residential and even 
industrial center on the eastern fringe of the Toronto metropolitan area so again people from this area won't want to drive all the way to an another station not nearby but another station to get to their final destination why not just provide it here close access towards route 401 and other major roads in the area the line will continue at 250 kilometers per hour and I believe now we are also sharing tracks with the Toronto go rail go rail so these are all go stations right here thankfully though the segment is four tracks so and now this is four tracks in that express in the middle local on the outside so I don't think that much needs to be done besides obviously electrification this can run at 250 kilometers per hour not to mention 250 kilometers per hour is not that much slower than full speed at least 300 kilometers per hour 400 maybe but more importantly it's not as noisy you don't want a really fast train going through built up high-end residential neighborhoods especially the ones along the shores of Lake Ontario so that's why that's another reason I'm, why I'm making this 250 kilometers per hour the next station and final station before Toronto Union is Guildwood Guildwood is a prime suburb on the eastern end not eastern fringe but like eastern end it's around 20 kilometers away from Union Station also people coming from the east can find a quick way to work and the property values will increase in addition to the other benefits I already explained with other suburban stations on regional high speed now this is three to four tracks so nothing needs to be done except electrification the goods trains and the go trains will still have enough space to move so the line will continue at 250 and it'll slow down here because you know why we are already at Toronto yes we are already at Toronto I didn't have to explain much this last part because honestly there's not much curve there's really no curve straightening Port Hope to Toronto there's nothing but just electrification nothing but electrification this segment right here can be easily done not to mention this is just a part of a bigger line connecting the biggest cities of southeastern Canada along the St. Lawrence River and Lakeshore region all together lots of existing segments used some may have to be widened but a very small percentage of this entire line will have to be brand new segments I believe five to six percent quite a bit more around 30 to 40 percent will have to be widened to two tracks but besides that even then you're still looking at around half is just electrification and it's good to go that's about it of this web view by the way I'm going to be going to India in the next actually tomorrow I'm leaving probably by the time this up video is uploaded it will be today I'm leaving but anyways I won't be able to make another web view for around three weeks so that's why I was rushing with it I wanted to get something big and let my viewers digest it and see the possible benefits and harms of such a line so that's why I decided to get the Canada high-speed rail done in one shot I was also thinking splitting up the web view between Montreal and Ottawa and then Ottawa to Toronto because as you can probably see this was a relatively long web view but I do think that it was worth it doing it in one shot two largest cities in one web view I think that will just resonate more with my viewers and just community as well Thank you for watching. Goodbye. I'll see you when I come back from India. Airport is the third largest airport of Canada. You may be thinking, third largest? Why not second? Actually, Vancouver is second largest, but that's beyond the point of this web view. Anyways, this is still a major airport and this has multiple functions one it allows easy access from Montreal to the airport so business travelers flying in can easily take a high-speed rail link to go to Montreal within seven or eight minutes beyond that though this line also serves the western and southwestern suburbs of Montreal so in other words they won't have to drive all the way to Gare Centrale to take a train to for example Quebec on the other hand they won't have to go all the way here to go to Toronto for example they could just make a more local start right there now this will be a regional high-speed stop so only certain trains will stop here not all 
but I do think such a station is vital both for the economy of Montreal and economy of Canada as a whole, not to mention the economic success of such a line. So after Aeroport de Montreal, it continues along the existing southern two tracks while the northern three to four tracks were for the existing IMT and goods trains. It continues to parallel Auto Route 20. In fact, the entire route since Quebec has pretty much paralleled Auto Route 20. That will change later on, I promise. So here's some curve straightening that needs to be done. The speed may need to decrease to 250 km per hour, but I think with tilting trains and extensive curve straightening efficiency, this can be 300 km per hour. I don't want a tunnel to go under this area here. So just across the bridge is the next station, Il Pero. Now Il Pero is on the extreme southwestern end. So this serves more of like the extreme western communities of the Montreal metropolitan area and similar purpose to the airport de Montreal station in that these people won't have to drive to another station to get on the train. So more people will be using the train and it will be more locally serving. Also, as I said, this will be a regional high speed stop and not an ultra high speed stop. So the ultra high speed trains which only stop at Montreal Gare Central Ottawa and Toronto Union Station will not stop here, as I just said with my last phrase. So after Il Perro, it will continue at 300 km per hour. Some slight curve straightening as the IMT system ends. And right after that, this is where 400 km per hour speeds start. Now, if trains cannot run at that speed by then, based on the technology of trains themselves, 350 is very doable, but I want this to be 400 because it is a, this is all existing dual track but more importantly it is desirable for high speed trains and the via trains are not really meant for speed all that much more for convenience to local communities and with that while i'm saying that i don't want the via trains to go away the via trains do serve a lot of smaller communities it's kind of like a hub and spoke system in a way even the regional high speed trains won't stop at every small town otherwise they won't be high speed so i'm still thinking that the via train should remain probably go on this upper segment here but even stop it like Bowmansville for example I don't know if they already do I don't think so actually and let the high speed rail do its its job of moving people quickly you have to find the right compromise between where you stop how many places you stop and what the maximum speed is now one place that I think we should stop at is Oshawa population around 220,000 people it is a main residential and even industrial center on the eastern fringe of the Toronto metropolitan area so again people from this area won't want to drive all the way to an another station not nearby but another station to get to their final destination why not just provide it here close access towards route 401 and other major roads in the area the line will continue at 250 kilometers per hour and I believe now we are also sharing tracks with the Toronto Go Rail, Go Rail. So these are all Go stations right here. Thankfully though, the segment is four tracks. So, and now this is four tracks in that express in the middle local on the outside. So I don't think that much needs to be done besides obviously electrification. This can run at 250 kilometers per hour. Not to mention 250 kilometers per hour is not that much slower than full speed at least 300 kilometers per hour, 400 maybe, but more importantly, it's not as noisy. You don't want a really fast train going through built up high-end residential neighborhoods, especially the ones along the shores of Lake Ontario. So that's why, that's another reason why I'm making this 250 kilometers per hour. The next station and final station before Toronto Union is Guildwood. Guildwood is a prime suburb on the eastern end, not eastern fringe, but like eastern end. It's around 20 kilometers away from Union Station. Also people coming from the east can find a quick way to work and the property values will increase in addition to the other benefits I already explained with other suburban stations on regional high speed. Now this is three to four tracks so nothing needs to be done except electrification. The goods trains and the go trains will still have enough space to move. So the line will continue at 250 
and it'll slow down here because you know why we're already at Toronto yeah that's really cool one of those things that you always see those videos on cool things on Google Earth guess what I just found one right here anyways after the a lake it will reach back on the existing alignment some minor curve straightening it will stay at its slower speed of 225 kilometers per hour there'll be some curve straightening just northwest of Beaver Lake and just west of Victoria Lake now here there are not that many mountains so a tunnel is not necessary it will continue through past Stitchbourne and past Parham now after Parham, this is where some more curve straightening has to go and possibly some viaducts over these roads as well. If I didn't already mention it, no grade crossings will be present in the full high speed line. So after Parham, the line will continue. Now after this, the line will continue and increase its speed back up to 250 km per hour as the turns are not as harsh anymore. So just East of Wilkinson, there's another curve straightening section, but again, this is for 250 km per hour capabilities of this line. Some more curve straightening, and it will pass through the communities of Lenz and Croydon. Now, Croydon is where the line will come back to a full speed of 300 km per hour. And as you can see, we have fully exited this, not mountain range, but hill range, and we're closer to Toronto than you might think. I'm trying to make this web go quickly. It will definitely be faster than the travel time between the two cities, no doubt about that. But I want to show that this is a really fast line. It goes through a lot of stuff, but before you know it, you'll be at your destination. So as I said, Croydon is where 300 km per hour section starts. Again, some curve straightening in the green segments. This is all still only one track, so this will have to be upgraded to two tracks. Finally, this line will reach the shoreline and the shoreline also continues along the St. Lawrence River from Montreal but it is much more curvy and obviously it would not go to Ottawa I would skip Ottawa completely so I decided the more northerly alignment but some curve straightened sections here while keeping the trains maximum speed of 300 kilometers per hour will allow it to go towards the shoreline and guess what on the shoreline we are back towards dual track rail in fact even three tracks west of Belleville now three tracks is vital because the goods trains can still have space to move not to mention the via trains so Belleville is a station here now this is a little different this is the first station that's not really a suburb of any particular city I guess it could be a very far reach from Toronto especially when this line's complete but this is to serve like the central southern like the north and also serves the western and southwestern suburbs of Montreal so in other words they won't have to drive all the way to Gare Centrale to take a train to for example Quebec on the other hand they won't have to go all the way here to go to Toronto for example they could just make a more local start right there now this will be a regional high-speed stop so only certain trains will stop here not all but I do think such a station is vital both for the economy of Montreal and economy of Canada as a whole, not to mention the economic success of such a line. So after Aeroport de Montreal, it continues along the existing southern two tracks while the northern three to four tracks are for the existing IMT and goods trains. It continues to parallel Auto Route 20. In fact, the entire route since Quebec has pretty much paralleled Auto Route 20. That will change later on, I promise. So here's some curve straightening that needs to be done. The speed may need to decrease to 250 km per hour, but I think with tilting trains and extensive curve straightening efficiency, this can be 300 km per hour. I don't want a tunnel to go under this area here. So just across the bridge is the next station, Il Pero. Now Il Pero is on the extreme southwestern end so this serves more of like the extreme western communities of the Montreal metropolitan area and similar purpose to the airport to Montreal station in that these people won't have to drive to another station to get on the train so more people will be using the train and it'll be more locally serving also as I said this will be a regional high-speed stop and not an ultra high-speed stop 
So the ultra high speed trains which only stop at Montreal, Gare Centrale, Ottawa and Toronto Union Station will not stop here as I just said with my last phrase. So after Il Perro, it will continue at 300 km per hour. Some slight curve straightening as the IMT system ends and right after that this is where 400 km per hour speeds start. Now if trains cannot run at that speed by then based on the technology of trains themselves, 350 is very doable but I want this to be 400 because it is a, this is all existing dual track but more importantly it is a straight shot for around 40 to 50 miles. You enter Ontario using this exact segment right here. So we're just in Ontario. I can stop using my French accent as I try to. Montreal becomes Montreal. So I'll probably still try using Montreal once in a while just for fun. But anyways, this is all existing. No curve straightening needs to be done at all. However, just west of Apple Hill will join it. But what's interesting is that there are four tracks for the IMT and goods trains and two tracks remain for the high speed train. So all that needs to be done is to electrify these tracks for high speed trains. So after a while you get to Aeroport de Montréal. Now Montréal Airport is the third largest airport of Canada. You may be thinking third largest? Why not second? Actually Vancouver is second largest but that's beyond the point of this webio. Anyways this is still a major airport and this has multiple functions. One, it allows easy access from Montreal to the airport so business travelers flying in can easily take a high-speed rail link to go to Montreal within seven or eight minutes. Beyond that though, this line also serves the western and southwestern suburbs of Montreal. So in other words, they won't have to drive all the way to Gare Centrale to take a train to, for example, Quebec. On the other hand, they won't have to go all the way here to go to Toronto, for example. They could just make a more local start right there. Now this will be a regional high speed stop, so only certain trains will stop here, not all. But I do think such a station is vital, both for the economy of Montreal and economy of Canada as a whole, not to mention the economic success of such a line. So after Aeroport de Montreal, it continues along the existing southern two tracks while the northern three to four tracks were for the existing IMT and goods trains. It continues to parallel Auto Route 20. In fact, the entire route since Quebec has pretty much paralleled Auto Route 20. That will change later on, I promise. So here's some curve straightening that needs to be done. The speed may need to decrease to 250 kilometers per hour, but I think with tilting trains and extensive curve straightening efficiency, this can be 300 kilometers per hour. I don't want a tunnel to go under this area here. So just across the bridge is the next station, Il Perro. Now Il Perro is on the extreme southwestern end. So this serves more of like the extreme western communities of the Montreal metropolitan area and similar purpose to the Aeroport de Montreal station in that these people won't have to drive to another station to get on the train. So more people will be using the train and it will be more locally serving. Also, as I said, this will be a regional high speed stop and not an ultra high speed stop. So the ultra high speed trains which only stop at Montreal, Gare Centrale, Ottawa and Toronto Union Station will not stop here, as I just said with my last phrase. So after Il Perro, it will continue at 300 km per hour, some slight curse to the of Canada, but also to make Canada more globally competitive. Canada is the only G7 nation without any high-speed rail whatsoever, and I think connecting the cities along the St. Lawrence and Great Lakes corridor of Canada, which houses more than half its population, is vital for such a competitive nation to remain competitive. So let's get into a little summary of this line itself. One can travel from Montreal to Ottawa in 30 minutes. Ottawa to Toronto will take 1 hour and 25 minutes. The entire journey from Montreal to Toronto will take 1 hour and 55 minutes. 
if you continue all the way up to Quebec it will still be around 2 hours and 40 to 45 minutes that is very very fast in fact if you thought 350 kilometers per hour in my last web view was fast get ready for this 400 km per hour speeds in parts of the line not all of it but parts of it not to mention there are quite a bit scenic parts of this line as well so if you enjoy scenery of the Canadian highlands this ro route will take you there as well so this line goes through Montreal goes through Ottawa now I chose Ottawa as a portion where this line goes because it is a capital of Canada and I believe it's a seventh or eighth largest city it's not that much smaller than Quebec and to omit it from this line would be a great not use of res not fulling use of resources if you know what I mean because Ottawa would anyways be only like 30 miles off course or 50 kilometers off course why not just make the line go up there it wouldn't add that much time to the overall travel time especially given the speed of this line that already is there as in would be there anyways so with before we get to the actual web view I'm going to go through the colors again because I just introduced these new colors in the last web view so blue is existing track segments they may be unelectrified but all that needs to be done is to electrify them green is new track segments so these are they could be curve straightening they're really all just curve straightening in a way I don't have some big 20 to 30 kilometer long new alignment especially in this web view but these are just new alignments that will allow the high speed to continue through all sections of the line yellow is existing alignment but it has to be widened from one track to two tracks so this would allow more capacity on the line so without out of the way let's begin so yes this looks interesting right kind of like the Greek kilometers per hour along these bends here I don't think curse trading was necessary because it would require quite a bit of new alignment where my mouse is going because otherwise it would destroy a lot of homes also we are relatively close to a station the line may increase to 150 kilometers per hour here but all trains stop at Ottawa Junction now you may be wondering why junction if you remember my Florida high-speed rail video the point of that was to get from center city to center city to center city well the problem here is that center city Ottawa is still quite a bit of a way away and there's no direct line that goes there and out without having to do what kind of like what the lambda situation in Montreal is to the extreme so it's around five kilometers to the north but I decided it's just worth it to build a station out here. Most of Ottawa is concentrated on the Ontario side of the region rather than the Quebec side of the region. So placing a station at least on the Ontario side of the region would make much more sense. It's also closer to much of the suburbs. In fact, more than half of the entire region will find an easier travel to go towards Ottawa Junction rather than Ottawa Central. If you live near Ottawa Central, you could just take the regional train towards Ottawa Junction and get on the train to go from there. All trains stop here, both regional and ultra. So the line will continue. It'll be a little slow here. And this is all dual track. I forgot to mention it. This is dual track. However, when it exits this kind of basket weave junction just east of Nipan, it'll go on a single track alignment so this has to be widened as well and this will go back to the full speed of 400 kilometers per hour yes full speed from now on full speed is 400 kilometers per hour it used to be 300 to 350 but I think this line can handle 400 next station is Barhaven now Barhaven is like a southern kind of satellite city of Ottawa it's a good 15 kilometers away from the city center so I was thinking building a station here would be vital with similar reasons as I said in like airport to Montreal and the other suburban station near Montreal so after Bar even the line will continue 400 kilometers per hour until just north of Smith's Falls this is where it reaches that line that cuts south of Ottawa and it would eventually rejoin the old segment that I went over 
so this will have to be a 2 km stretch of brand new track but the speed will stay at 400 km per hour. However, after Perth, just north of Perth actually, there's some curves.